back over in DB Diagram, uh, I'm just going to write out uh, something to, to kind of get us set up with like what we want to do next going going forward. Because we've been here before. The only new thing that we have now is that our products table has an ID column on it. We want to add a second table now to our database. So our, remember, our database is the name of storefront. Okay, now inside that database, we have a products table. We're going to add another table inside of that database. We're going to call this table stores. So over here, we'll say table, and then we'll give it the name stores. Okay, and then let's just uh, simply give it one column for now. Uh, let's just say we want the table, we want to be able to give the store a name. All right, so we'll say name, and we'll just say varchar. Okay, so now you see over in our diagram here, we have a store table now showing up. So that's the starting point. Let's add in the new thing that we just learned about, uh, a primary key, ID primary key column on this stores table. So let's go ahead and do that here. So I will say ID integer and then primary key. Okay, just like that. So now this stores table has a pri uh, ID primary key column on it as well. Now this is going to serve, you know, again, so that that ID column serves as a unique identifier for each row in each of the respective tables. Uh, what we're also going to see now is that we can use that in order to link uh, items together from different tables. Okay, so if we think about this, if we zoom out and kind of think about a store, when you walk in a store, you know, a store typically has uh, more than one product that they sell. Some stores might only have one, but a lot of them, and in our example, what we're going to assume is that a store has many products that it sells. So that has many uh, part right there that I just said, that represents a relationship between two entities, okay? So we can say that a store has many products and a product belongs to a store, okay? Now, this is these are uh, relationship names that you'll see uh, used all over in, in database and SQL land and also in Rails. In Rails, we have those relationships of, you know, a store has many products, product belongs to a store. Okay, so that's not like a Rails specific thing. That is just an SQL and database uh, thing. It's a, you know, a relational database uh, terminology there. So how do we set up the relationships that way? The way that we relate a record from one table to a record in another or a record in one table to another record in that same table is through the use of foreign keys okay so the recipe here that you can uh, keep around is that when we say a store has many products and a product belongs to store whatever is on the has many side so in our case a store has many what products products is going to be the table that we're going to add a foreign key column to that foreign key column is going to hold the value of the ID of the store that the product belongs to. Okay, so what that means is over here, we need to set up some information to link these two together. So what we need to do is over on our products table, we need to say that this products table is also going to have a foreign key that points to uh, the store ID. Now that's the typical name con convention there. Whatever uh, is on the other side of the has has many relationships so in this case store you use that table name suffixed with underscore id so over here we want to say store underscore id and that is an integer now we see that products has a store uh underscore id integer column on it now we can show the relationship here uh in db diagram by saying ref so we say uh, stores dot id uh, has many products st store ID okay so now you see that when we set this up it puts this line here joining these two tables together here okay so this this indicates the relationship between these two uh, tables here so a store you can see how this branches out on the end it indicates the it has many products and then the product uh, comes back this way has one store and again you can see when you hover over either this box or the line or this column box over here you can see this one here right and then the asterisk over here so this is indicating that going this way this is a, a has many relationship and coming back this way this is only a belongs to relationship so now we need to get that foreign key column uh, into our products table now and we could add that column in but we're not quite there yet in this series So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to get more practice dropping and creating tables So let's recreate or let's first drop our products table again. So we'll say drop table 
products. Okay, go ahead and drop our table. It's gone now. So now we need to write our create table definition again. So this will be good for some practice here. So let's say create table. Okay, we want to create a products table. And now let's open up some parentheses and start writing in our stuff. We'll go ahead and close uh, or end off our SQL statement there with our semicolon so that we don't forget. We'll do that now. So first thing we want to do is we want to set up that ID column. So we'll, we'll say ID. It's the name of our column. It's going to be serial. And then we want to say primary key. Again, that sets up some performance benefits for us when we start querying products by the ID from the products table. And now let's say the name column, and that is going to be a varchar, we'll say 50. Put a comma there. Product code. Uh, that is going to be an integer. Price is going to be a decimal. And then max discount is also going to be a decimal. And now we want to set up the uh, foreign key to point to our stores table. So we'll say store underscore ID. And then that needs to be a type of integer. Okay. Or a data type of integer. Now, here's where we set up the part to let this, uh, let our database know that this is going to be uh, a foreign key here. So what we need to say now is references. Okay, that's the keyword. And now we need to tell it what table that it needs to reference some column on. So in our case, we're going to say the stores table. And then inside parentheses here, we tell it what column on the store table to look at. So here in our case, we just want to say ID. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. And so now we see when we run this, we get an error. It doesn't create our table. Now I want to do this intentionally so that you can see what happens. So it says the relation stores does not exist. Now this is due to this uh, de column definition that we're pro providing here. This, this needs to exist. This stores table needs to exist first in order for us to be able to reference columns from that table. So I wanted to uh, show you this so that if you run across this error, you'll know kind of what's happening. So we need to go create our stores table first. So let's do that now. So let's say create table. Okay, and we'll just do stores, oops, uh, table, stores. All right, now let's set up our columns here and first end this off. So this one, we also want to make sure that we have an ID column on it. It's going to be serial, primary key. Okay. And now let's just start with the name here. Let's say Varchar. Uh, we'll give it 50 as well. So if we run that, we'll see uh, that query ran successfully. If we refresh over here, we'll see that we have a stores table. It's got an ID and name columns on it. Now let's pop back over here and let's uh, create our products table again. So let's say create table products and then let's set up uh, our columns here so let's say ID again serial okay primary key right and now that's we want our products table to have a name column that's gonna be varchar we'll do 50 again here oops comma and then let's see what else do we have product code that was an integer price decimal uh, max discount, also a decimal. Okay, now we can set up that foreign key column on the products table, and when we run this, we shouldn't have that error this time. So again, uh, the syntax here is we want to name it store underscore ID. So this is a naming convention here. So store underscore ID, it's going to be an integer. Okay, and then we want to use that references keyword. So this is how we say, again, you know, what table that this column is referring to or what value in the store ID column on the products table for a given row, what table we need to go look for to find the related record. So in our case, this is going to point to the stores table. Okay. And then uh, what column on the stores table is it going to point to? It's going to point to the ID column. Okay. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and give this a run and let's see. And now we see that the query ran okay. And if we refresh over here, we'll see that now we have two tables uh, in our storefront database. We have our stores table, and then we have our products table. And it has an ID, name, product code, price, max discount, and store ID columns on it. All right, so now that we've got these two tables created, let's try and insert a row into our products table. Okay, so let me grab data from a row here just to save some time. 
Okay, so again, the, uh, to insert a row into a table, we'll say insert, we'll use that insert keyword, and then into, and then the name of the table, in our case, it's gonna be the products table, and then we wanna insert uh, name, and then let's see, what else do we wanna do? Product code, price, and max discount. Okay, and then I'll come on a, oops, I'll come on a new line here, say values, and then I'll uh, paste this in here, end off our SQL statement, and let's try and run this. Okay, so we ran it, inserted one row. Uh, let's have a look now uh, at our products table. Let's do a select star from products. Let's run this, and now we see, uh, so it, it auto-populated the ID column for us. Remember, we don't ever set a value for that. Put our name in there, product code, price, max discount. Uh, but note that the store ID is null in this case. So this product right now doesn't have any store that it belongs to. And if we were trying to write a query to get the store, uh, it would not it would not work. But what we can do is we can write a query right now to get all the products out of the products table where the uh, store ID is null. So what we can do is let's say uh, select all from products. Let's add a where statement right here. Where store underscore ID, now we can use a new keyword, is null. Okay, we haven't seen this before, but if we run this, we see that we get back that row. All right, let's say we had, let's, let's do another insert uh, into our products table. So insert, oops, into products, name, product code, price, max discount, uh, values, and then I'm gonna paste this one in here, end this off, let's run this. So uh, that query ran okay, inserted a row, let's do a select all from products, run that. Now we see we have two products in our products table, both have the uh, store ID column set to null. And again, we can get both of those back by doing where uh, store underscore ID is null. If we run that, we see again, we get both of those records back. So is null is good to use uh, to find records that aren't associated to a store but now let's go ahead and fix this let's make a store and then uh, let's associate these two products with that store so right now let's just get a reminder of what we have on the stores table so let's do a select all from stores oops switch screens there select all from stores let's run this query so our stores table only has an id and name fields so let's go ahead and make a store here so we'll do insert into stores we want to do name right and then we want to say, oops, values. Uh, let's call the store soap and things. Okay. So we'll do that. And then we'll make sure to end off our uh, SQL statement. And let's run this. And we see that uh, it query ran successfully, inserted one row. Let's check it out. Let's say select all from stores. Run that. And now we see that that row has been successfully inserted into the database. Uh, table the stores database table. So now what we'd like to do is if we select all from products We want to set the store ID for both of the products that we have in here. So uh, this would be a good opportunity to practice uh, your uh, Update calls. So what we want to do before you get started in the exercise I'll kind of get I'll give you an overview of what we want to do here We have two rows in our products table right now They both have null values or non-existent values for their store ID columns so what we want to do, or store ID attributes or fields, what we want to do is we want to set this to one for both of those, uh, which is the ID of the one store that we have right here, okay? So go ahead, pause the video here, try to see if you can write the update statement to update the store ID columns for all the rows, the two rows that we have in our products table right now. All right, so to do so, let's go back over to our SQL editor here. We're going to say update. And then we give it the name of the table we want to update, products. We're going to say set store underscore ID equal to one. And now we could do like a where statement here, but we want to do it for all the rows that we have right now. So we can do that easily just by ending this uh, statement off right here and running it. And we see that the query ran okay. Two rows were affected. And if we look at that, we'll say select all from products. We run that query. We see now that those uh, the columns or the fields for each row uh, in our products table have been updated to have their store ID set to one.
So to end off this video, what I want to do is I want to make one more store and insert three more um, products into our products table. And then we'll associate the next three products that we're going to make with the new store that we're about to create here. All right, so let's uh, insert a new store record into our stores table. So we'll say insert into stores uh, name is what we're going to want to do here. I'm gonna come on new line here. I'll say values. Now uh, I want to use an example here. So let's do uh, let's name the store Bob's uh, shop. Now you'll note that uh, something looks a bit off here, right? Like why? Why is this the highlighting here? The syntax syntax look weird. And if we try to run this right now, we'll see that we get an error syntax error near this S here uh, because we've actually terminated this string early. And so it doesn't know what to do after beyond that point here. So if you want to do something like this, the way to do that is we need to escape that single quote and you can do that by doubling it up. So if we do two of them in a row right there and then come over here and add our last one, you can see our syntax highlighting is back. And if we run this, we'll see that the query had ran, uh, run successfully and we uh, inserted one row. And if we come back up here and we select all from the stores table and look at things, we'll see that uh, we now have Bob's shop uh, also in our uh, stores table. All right, so with Bob's shop here, it's got an ID of two. Uh, what I'm going to do is insert three more products into our products table and set their store foreign key to be uh, pointing to Bob's shop here, which has an ID of two. So let's say insert into products. And then again, we want to do name, uh, product code, price, oops, not primary key, price, max discount, and then we'll also do store ID this time. Okay, now we want to uh, do our values keyword, and then I'm going to come on a new line here, uh, paste some stuff in that I had saved off over here to save some time. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to add in the foreign key value here. So we'll say two at the end of this, again, making sure to, oops, not three, um, make sure to match up the values here with the order of the uh, columns that we have set up here. So the store ID is last. So let's go ahead and set uh, two everywhere. And now let's run this. And we see the query ran OK. Three rows affected. Let's do a select all from products. And let's check things out. OK, here we go. Now we see we have five products. And we can see the first two have store IDs of one. And then the... Uh, last three have the store ID set as two. So we're going to end this video here. In the next video, we're going to start to see how we can use this stuff and uh, put together some queries to uh, grab products that are belong to a certain store. And then we'll also look at how we can uh, join the two tables and get information from both tables based off of a query that we run. So I will see you there.